how to create a tiny planet from a panorama of a landscape or a cityscape. You can find a panorama online. I found this one at Unsplash. It's by Everaldo Coelho. And there's quite a few different uh, panorama landscapes on there that you could choose from. So again, it could be cities, it could be mountains, or just a regular old landscape. And that will work as long as it's this long stretched out panorama. So once you have that, you're gonna open it up into Photoshop, and then we're going to do a couple very quick techniques here. So we're gonna go up to Image, and we're gonna choose Image Size. Now with the Image Size, typically, uh, when you see the width and the height here, you're gonna see this little link clicked, and these lines that go from the width to the height. For this uh, setting that we want to do, we want to unclick that. So I'm gonna click the link, and you'll see there's no longer any lines going from the width to the height. And then we want to make the width the same measurement as the height. So I'm going to set that at 8.987, which is what the current height is, and just hit OK. And what that did was scrunch this whole panorama down into a square. So it just kind of, you know, distorted all of those different buildings so they're really uh, kind of skinny and tall. Now we want to go into image and we want to go to image rotation and flip this 180 degrees so that it's upside down. Now this is the fun part. Now we're gonna go to filter and we are going to distort this and choose polar coordinates. And when we do that, we're gonna be able to see in this little pop-up window a preview of what this will look like. You'll probably have to hit the minus button a few times in order to see this. But now you can see this is kind of turned into this small little world with all of these little buildings on it. So now I can go ahead and hit OK. And the only thing now that we kind of have to do is we have to clean this up because we don't want to see this dividing line here in the center. And no matter what panorama you have, you're most likely um, going to see something like this. So there's a couple different tools that we can use to kind of patch this up. One of them is the clone stamp tool. So if we just go in and click the clone stamp tool, uh, we can, this works a lot like the healing brush tool. So we can kind of hover out here, hold the option key down, click to select, and then paint into this area here. So it just kind of fills up that spot and it makes it a little hazy. I can then kind of go over here and do the same thing. So I'm gonna click on the blue. Now another thing I can do is I can take the opacity down on this so when I paint over the top, it kind of doesn't paint as much as it would typically so that becomes a little bit more faded in between those two. So that can also be a good solution when you're trying to blend two things together on this. It gets a little tricky in these spots where there's a lot of detail so sometimes you have to be pretty creative with that. You might need to zoom in quite a bit so command plus to do that and take your brush size down which would be the bracket keys you could use for or use to do that or you could also change it up here in this menu. Um, and then again I can kind of select out here with my option key and then go, here, I'll need to actually take this brush down. You can see a little preview of what you're going to be painting and if you see that um, you start to get any of the buildings in there, then it's not going to work very well, or if it's mountains or other things. I'm gonna take my opacity back up because as you can see, that didn't really dissolve that line that well, so I'm gonna try this one more time. Option, select, and then I'm just gonna paint that up to blend that out. Option, select, and then I'm gonna paint that up. Okay, and I don't really see any line there, so that's looking good. I'm gonna get this yellow and now take the opacity down a little bit and paint in here just a little bit with that yellow. Now, where these two are not quite lining up, I could kind of go back into this area, select, and then kind of bring it slightly down and paint that in. And that actually didn't do a whole lot. Let me try it one more time, bring it slightly down and paint that in and then select again bring it slightly down and paint that in and then we can kind of again with that opacity down kind of keep clicking in and selecting and blending those things together so it does get a little um, tricky here in terms of getting that 
to look like it's actually blending. But that's pretty good. I'll lift that up. There we go. Not too bad, especially when you zoom out. Now you can't really tell as much that you know you have blended that together. I'm gonna put a little bit more purple here because it doesn't make sense that that would be um, kind of wiggly in that spot. Now for the interior part here, um, that's gonna be a little bit easier. I'm gonna blow my brush back up here and I'm gonna select and then paint that in. Now uh, another tool that you can use is the healing brush tool. And you can even use the spot healing tool. If you do that, be really careful um, because sometimes it'll pull in too much detail from other areas. It'll try to use um, all of these buildings as um, kind of a reference point. So uh, the healing brush tool though works just like the clone stamp. So again, you can option click and then kind of paint in here to blend those together. So I'm gonna try doing that with the rest of the this kind of hard line in the center here. There we go. And then if I go back to the spot healing brush, if I kind of go through here, a lot of times that will just naturally blend it for you. But sometimes when you kind of don't have as much control with that, it ends up not being as great as if you actually just used the regular old healing brush. There we go. Okay, so then when you're done, you'll have something like this. Again, you might want to go back in and if you see that, you know, here it's starting to look a little too abrupt in those um, color changes, you could go back in and do a little editing with that to try to blend that a little bit more. Um, but overall, that's pretty much it. And you can do this uh, multiple times with different images. The last thing that you're going to do is if you look at this, uh, this is a really fun little planet, but it's really difficult to see because it's kind of zoomed out. So one last thing that we could do is we can click on our crop tool and I want you to go up here and if you have it set to anything else, I want you to choose unconstrained. And what that should do is have a crop setting right around your actual document. Go up to the corner, hold your shift key down, click, and then hold your option key down and you'll be able to zoom this in um, in a centered way. If you take the option key off, it will just zoom it down to the lower left corner or whatever opposite corner from the uh, corner that you're pulling from and if you hold your option key down you'll actually be able to center that so I like that that looks pretty good when you're happy with it hit return and then we can zoom in and see our cool little city here all right so go ahead um, practice with this have some fun creating your little tiny planets and I look forward to seeing what you create